So guys, this is my, my motto. And uh, Scott Jelinski got me thinking about this because he had one. And he said you should end your class. He used to talk about this. You should have one of these things that defines you. So I worked on it. And I came up with something, I asked Shelly, and she goes, yeah, that's not quite right. And I worked on it again and presented to Scott, and he said, that's not quite right. And we finally got good enough, and I'm really happy with it. I really believe in measuring things, obviously. And then I think the next process is to refine them relative to your value. And then you have to go perform them, because I've never believed in the cold standard. The problem is recency. If you've done anything in the last 72 hours, it's not cold. It's recent. If it takes longer than that, you start degrading your skills, and in about three weeks, you've lost five to 10% of your skills. If you go three months, you're going to go back to the baseline of 80 or so. You probably still can do it, but it's gonna feel out of sorts and out of timing until you get back to it. And you need to perform under pressure. If you look at this, measure is accuracy, refine is speed and efficiency, and performance mode. I've clearly defined the three things you expect to see in class. Your baseline between dry and live fire is the problem. A lot of you do dry practice, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what happens is your dry practice doesn't reflect your live fire, and you can simply say, well, that's because there's no recall. But that's not the big issue we're finding. The big issue is how you predict the sites. So measure your, your dry fire by doing binary shot calling. If you believe it to be a miss, you're correct. Make it up. And if you hit, know that you hit. Pay attention, because you don't have recall, so it gets simpler. You just watch what's happening. The red dot has changed dry fire forever because it is actually like shooting. Because we can see it on the wall. We can see it on the target. It's being projected through our stereoscopic vision. No more than five to 10% difference between dry and live fire. But sometimes we see 50%. A guy say, ah, I can shoot this drill in three seconds and then I test him and it's nine seconds. Because they're not pairing up. He's not valuing the same system. He's just getting done or she's getting done without actually seeing or doing. How much dry fire do you need? Very little. Five to 10 minutes, two or three times a week will satiate, uh, satiate the recency bias. That's really all you need with it, and it's very important. If you have dry practice, about every five session, you need one live fire. Five to one's a pretty good ratio. You can probably go 10 to one, but it's a really stretch. The habits will creep in if you're not careful. Right. Uh, you have three practice modes that should be practiced in your dry and live fire. You should start with accuracy and precision. Make sure you can hit the target. If you can do that, move on. So some of your accuracies, first shooter, don't spend a whole bunch of time. If it's all good, you know it's good to move on. And then go to speed and efficiency. You speed shooters, make sure you do a bit of accuracy to confirm that your speed's working. And then never leave the range in accuracy mode or speed mode. If you leave in accuracy mode, you're gonna shoot too slow and you may die with your gun still loaded. If you leave in speed mode, you'll shoot too fast and miss and you may die with your gun unloaded. But if you leave in performance mode, the clear goal is always to see the dot and call your shot. If you're clearly back in performance mode, speed and accuracy will be well aligned and you'll be good to go. And that's how you keep it true to the system. Identify the problem and set a goal. So for me, it was reloads recently. I went to AJ Zito and Tim Heron. We talked about it. I explored it. I tried a couple things and now I figured out exactly what I'm capable of doing and I accept it, it was a good goal. And now I practice it once a week, maybe for five, 10 reps. I don't need a whole lot of reps anymore. Every practice should be an assessment. Every assessment should help you adapt for the result you want. And what is the assessment? Was I present? Did I see something? Did I feel something? That's it. And as soon as your mind can't be present, you need to stop practicing. But some days you have an attention surplus and you can practice for a longer time. Allow it, enjoy it, and do it. And if you can't do anything that day, do one good draw. That's all you need. If you're present, you practice that one good draw and put it away as you should when you put your pistol in the holster in the morning, you'll be good to go. Doesn't have to be a grinder. There are many types of practicers and one of them is the grinder, the soldier. They're just gonna suffer and they're gonna do rep after rep after rep after rep and they're not present so they ingrain bad habits. Some of you have suffered that recently. Suddenly a weird habit shows up. It means you're grinding instead of paying attention. Performance qualifiers, tests, and drills, you should pick random ones or different ones because you're always gonna choose your favorites, you know? Uh, so you like to shoot the test, or you like to shoot dot torture, or you wanna shoot the black belt standards, mix them up. I use four tests for a reason because you can't pick one. And what happens is two go really well and the other two need a bit of attention. One's outstanding, one needs a lot of attention. It's a good way to assess yourself. 
after you take the test, look at your numbers, write them down, review them, adjust your training schedule, like suddenly your draw is getting a quarter second for no reason, think about that and start working on it. For me, if I don't stay on the clock three times a week, I lose my speed. It's the most fragile of all things. As you adjust it, change, and all this will lead you to measure, refine, and perform.